Welcome back to Celebrity Radio. It's Alex Belfield talking to some of the world's most powerful people, some of my favourite people, and a gorgeous lady as well. Kelly Hoppen, MBE, is the lady who has turned her passion for design into a multi-billion pound empire. How does that sound? Sounds fab. (laughs) Are you all right? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Well, I'm delicious, but it must be even better being you because to be able to take something that you'd love and potentially do for free and turn it into an empire is pretty smart, isn't it? Well, I think, you know, that's what we're sort of talking about today is a a passion for what you do and being able to turn that into a business. And, And I really do bounce out of bed every day and I look forward to what I do. I love design. I love everything around design, but I also love business. So to roll the two into one is just heaven for me. Here's the thing, though. You can't be taught passion or creativity or art, can you? That's something you were born with. You were then smart enough to turn that into a business. Are all business people creative or can you just be the brains behind the creatives? Well, I think there's different things. I think, yes, I'm I'm a creator and I was born with that. My business skills were totally self-taught. I'm completely dyslexic numerically and can't spell, but I... But, you know, I've got spell check and I had accountants. So if you've got a business brain, you can make that work. I think you're born with something when you become an entrepreneur. I see it in young people. There's just that something that makes them stand out from someone else. But it's hard work. It's determination, self-discipline. You know, it's a passion to succeed. But you do it for yourself but it needs a lot of energy and stamina to do that. www.btrrm2015.co.uk is the website. It's interesting, the real role model. I think that's sort of a dig at the role models that we seem to aspire to, which have big bums and large knockers. (laughs) Well, you know, I think the thing is that You know, today it's very different 40 years on when I started my business. You know, we didn't have all of these kind of shows on television. And, you know, we we were aspiring maybe to... Uh, what I call sort of real entrepreneurs at that time that you just heard about or read about. And I think today we're so ensconced in watching all of this reality on on television and reading about it in magazines. And I think that people are mixing up the true passionpreneurs for just becoming famous quickly and making money. I think to turn a business into something that really can be substantial, starting from very small and growing, I think you have to have a real passion for what you're doing and to have the right reasons for doing it. Help me with women in 2015, especially young women, because it seems to be quite confused. On the one hand, we've got this women can do anything. Women should be paid as much as men, which, of course, they should. They should be entitled to have any position they want. And then on the other hand, there's girls that want to be Kim Kardashian and just think that putting lipstick on and shaving off your uh, sort of eyebrows and painting them back on is a way of earning a living. Are there enough girls good role models like yourself or are there too many distractions of people who are one in a million because let's remember there's only one Katie Price and Kim Kardashian I mean first of all I would just want to say that you know both Katie Price and Kim Kardashian are actually very clever business people whether you like them or not and what they stand for they have actually created a business out of themselves but in answer to your question There are plenty of people that can be role models to these young girls today or women in their mid-30s and 40s. I just think that you've got to be realistic and you've got to figure out what it is that you know that you can do that could turn into a business. You have to see what it is that you're doing that stands out from someone else because, unfortunately, there is so much competition out there today that it's very hard to be seen. But I think with social media, radio, television you know, you've got a much better chance of being seen than you did in, in my time. Mm. I was just with a dinner at, with a friend of mine who's an actor who is stunningly beautiful the other day. And he said to me, I'm going to L.A. because my agent told me that I'm one of the most beautiful people in London. I said, yeah, but the problem going to L.A. is there's a million of them. That's not good enough. <laughs> and it's all relative, isn't it, talent? It is all relative. And I just think that you've, as I said, and I always bat on about it, you know, If you're egotistical and you think too highly of yourself and you're not real about, you know, it's got to be authentic. Authenticity is really important in actually getting somewhere in life. And I think if you're starting off and you want to become a passionpreneur and you want to have a chance at creating something, make it authentic. 
You can find out more by going to the website. Britain's top real role model is at www.btrrm2015.co.uk. When we look at your life, it is extraordinary. I mean, you mentioned earlier the dyslexia. You really have overcome some incredible challenges. What made you so tenacious to fight that and be as successful as you are? Again, do you think you were born with that or is that family and support? I think I was born with it, but I think the tragedy of my father dying when I was 16, I've thought about it because I'm asked the question a lot. I'm absolutely convinced that it was the biggest shock of my life and I felt really vulnerable. And I just remember thinking I'm never going to rely on anything ever again. I'm going to be self-sufficient, self-supportive, and I'm going to be really successful. And it was it's a drive. It's in me still today. You know, my motto is nothing's too big, but nothing's ever big enough. You know, nothing frightens me. And I think that a real true entrepreneur is not fearful of anything. It's like the more challenging, the more fantastic, the more kind of saliva you get in your mouth. And you think, yes, I can do that challenge. Yes, I'm going to try and do it. But you do it for yourself. If you do it for someone else and you're waiting to have a pat on the back, it's a waste of time. This is something you do on your own. Being an entrepreneur, you know, I always say being a boss is actually quite a lonely business. You know, you're, you're at the top. It's, it's really you and it's your bubble and you have to create the right environment in that bubble to get people to come in it with you to help support you. And when you're an entrepreneur, you'll realize that you need to bring people into your business that are better at doing the accounts or better at doing certain things that you're not good at. Find out what your passion is. Find out what it is that you're good at. And that's what you do. And that's how you'll create a good business. How hard is it sacking someone for the first time? I've never actually had to do it. Is it as tough as they say? Oh, it's horrible. It's awful. But you have to follow your gut. If something doesn't work and the person isn't working out, you have to, you know, you, there's no nice way of getting rid of somebody and, and telling them that they no longer fit in your in your world. But, you know, it happens. I haven't done it that often. I actually have to say I've been unbelievably lucky with the staff that I have. But I think that you know, when you're at the top and you have a big business, you know, you are the business. So how you are to people and and how you look after people in your business will will very much be a mirror image of the people that work for you. Can enthusiasm make up for being a fart, Ed? I mean, if you're not very good, can being really into it sort of compensate for that? No, because I think, you know, eventually you're going to you're going to be seen for for what you are. You need enthusiasm 100 percent. You know, I said earlier, you know, sometimes on Dragon's Den, people will come on and, and give you a pitch and it'd be like, nah, 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 nah. or you'd get someone coming on going, I've got this amazing idea and I'm determined and da 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 da. And, they, and it catches your attention and you think, OK, let me listen to this. So I think, you know, your communication skills and who you are and the, the kind of extraordinary way that you network with people and talk to people you don't want to be big-headed you want to be authentic you want to be honorable you want to be humble but at the same time tenacity is a fantastic you know contribution to any entrepreneur help me with people who let you down and disappointment in business where did you find the strength to do that because a career is never a hundred percent happy and simple is it no, and I think you are let down every single day. If you know, if you were to sit down and think about your day and write down all the good things, you know, they're going to outweigh the bad. But, you know, I'm in a business where I constantly rely on people because I'm building houses all over the world for people and I'm, you know, relying on them to deliver on time in the right format, in the perfect luxury, you know, no mistakes. And sometimes stuff happens and you do feel let down. But the true trait of an entrepreneur is to look at it and go, fine, right, it's happened, move on. Who do we have that can rectify this? How can we get it delivered on time? And the one thing that I've learned is you've got to be calm when you talk to people, never lose your cool, don't shout at people. It won't get you anywhere. You know, I always say in my business, if nobody's died, we don't have a problem. We'll sort it out. I, I was just looking at the newspapers this morning. And again, this story about women's pay is coming up. And it is extraordinary yeah. to me. I'm not a guy. I spent 15 years at the BBC where they love to tick boxes. So they'll put somebody in who doesn't know what they're doing just because they look right or fill a certain box. I'm not into that. I, I think the best person should get the job. But at the same time, it is still astonishing to me that women are being paid in the same role less than a man it is yeah. extraordinary isn't it I do I think gender equality is very important you know I'm a great believer in that but I do think women should be women and men should be men you need both to have equal balance
difference in the world, and women who do the same job as men should be paid the same. I mean, we have moved so far forward in in my lifetime. I am absolutely horrified that we're still actually having this conversation. You get paid for it, you know, for what you're capable of doing, no matter whether you're a man or a woman. It shouldn't matter. You are in far more boardrooms than I am. Is there still an issue about giving women jobs? And what is it? Is it that they have to have time off to raise children, which is unfortunate? Is it the fact that men don't want to be in a room with women because they want to go and play golf, or is it just because men are just ultimately sexist in the boardroom? I don't know because I spend as little time in a boardroom as I possibly can. If you saw my boardroom at the HQ at Kelly Hoppen, it's fabulous, and you know you'd never have that kind of feeling. Board is in the title, isn't it? (laughs) You took the words out of my mouth. (laughs) (laughs) But just help me with that, then. The guys that are running these companies are they inherently sexist? That's what I'm asking. Well, maybe I don't know. You know, everybody's individual. I just think that there's a lot of stigma and there's a lot of history, and I think that it just depends on the individual as to how you're going you know in all my life where I if you think about my business I spent a lot of my you know 40 years on a building site which is very male orientated I never felt like I shouldn't have been on that building site you know it was a very real world that I was in where you know I was giving design and people were building and everybody's end result was we want it to be fantastic I think when you go into a corporate business in a boardroom yes there is sometimes that feeling that maybe you're you know that you're looked upon in a different way being a woman and I think it's wrong but you know what women are strong and women can overcome that and women will win it in the end Mm. well I'm ginger and deeply unattractive I find the same thing people just don't (laughs) like me it's like being an outcast you know what I mean well, I'm ginger and it's never held me back. Well, so. you've got that will and grace thing going on. We'll end with this because you are, well, if you don't mind me saying gorgeous. And Aww. what's it like being attractive? That's a feeling I've never had. <laughs> I bet you have. Send me a picture of yourself. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're not allowed to send obscene material through the internet these days. Oh, I don't know. Listen, do you know what? I don't really think about that. I get up in the morning, I go to the gym, have a workout for an hour and get ready to go to work. I always want to make myself look nice nice and I buy far too many clothes but you know you kind of just get on and and do it I think if you think about those things too much they you know you can't really get on and do your job properly I went to the gym and applied to join the gym and they said that they couldn't polish a turd. I don't know what that means, Kelly, but if you could help me with that. You can find out more about Britain's top real role model at www.btrrm2015.co.uk. Of course, the Dragons are back and you're not on it this year. I'm sorry about that because you were really good. You fitted into that show beautifully. Thank you. No, I loved it. I loved it. But I just workload was just too much for me. And, you know, my passion really is design and it's my 40th year this year and I've got lots of big things happening and I just couldn't commit to it so uh, sadly I'm not on it but it was brilliant I did love it what I love about people like you creatives and people who sort of do the finishing touches is when the guy comes in with more money than sense and says no I don't like it do the whole thing again is that frustrating or do you just think well all right I'll charge you more money no, because luckily I would say 99% of what I do, I don't have that because I, you know, I'm good at finding out what people want and it doesn't really matter how much money someone's got. It's just getting the job done right. So, um, no, I wouldn't, no, I would never sort of look at it like that. Occasionally you've got people that can't decide what they want and then it becomes frustrating, but that's my job really. Yeah. And, and just very finally, I've still got the ducks going up the wall, you know, up the stairs. <laughs> Is it time I took those down? Are they old fashioned now? As long as they're in a straight road, just don't have them going diagonal. It'd be far more cool. No, mine are very uh, Vera Duckworth, if you know what I mean. Great to talk to you. (laughs) Kelly Hoppen is uh, a huge star, designer, entrepreneur, and the lady who's inspiring all of these people to become real role models. Good for you. www.btrrm2015.co.uk is the website. Kelly, so lovely to talk to you. Thank you for your time. Thank you.